why I'm passionate about the industry that we're in. Now, these will go on automatically, so I will have to keep to time, okay, Jonathan? All right, so let's start at the very beginning. Back in 1972, yeah, I know. I've got less hair now. We just joined the EU, CND marches everywhere. We had the Godfather, a minor strike, Mark Spitz, Ziggy Stardust, uh, and a car actually called the Plymouth Satellite. Um, and then I was introduced to this young lady, um, and a sound like I'd never heard before. And it might not go it, do it on here, but it goes like this. And I thought, what on earth is that? And it was Roxy Music, and they had synthesizers. I had no idea what it was. But it introduced me to electronics. My mate's brother was making a, a synthesizer in his bedroom, as you do. So I made a crystal radio set. I made a couple of amplifiers, the BC-107. Remember those? Yeah, I thought this crowd would know those. And then, of course, we moved on to the IC. We got really high tech. You know, we went to uh, 741. Somebody said before, is that a 555? Ah, this place is full of geeks. Brilliant. <laughs> right. Uh, a light and dark sensor. No idea why we made those. But the Hartley oscillator was really important to me because it was musical. And actually, it formed quite a bit of the rest of my working career, or at least the early part. And I did Morse code, did it, did it, did it, and all that kind of stuff for Body's Head Radio. But it's a slow way, if not an elegant way, to communicate. But they needed something a bit more upbeat, something, something more elegant. And did they get it? Uh, it was only 50 boards, so bless it. It'll be, it'll be with us in a minute. But no, here it is. Oh no, it was only Radio Telex. So it wasn't really what we were looking for. So after doing that for 10 years, I came across the, uh, the works of this man, Arthur C. Clarke. Uh, I know that all of you know him and have read him. And of course, his paper from, I think, 1945. October, was it? Thank you, Jonathan, for wasting three seconds. Um, <laughs> suggested you could get three satellites to cover the whole world. That wasn't quite true, although uh, I have to say, uh, Inmarsat did try. We'll talk about that in a moment. So I moved within BT, uh, got stuck into the services at Goon Hilly. And of course, they've got a couple of big old dishes down there. Uh, and then from Goon Hilly, of course, that was only the ground segment. What was up in space? Uh, and I was providing services through Inmarsat, and for those that remember, that's an Inmarsat 3, I think, um, and uh, did some great work with, uh, with that through the years. Not on the maritime side for me, um, but it's when I progressed over to uh, the land mobile side. I'll talk about that in a moment. We talked before about three uh, operational regions that could cover the globe, as Arthur C. Clarke had said. Actually, we had a little bit of a gap at Inmarsat, so we put a fourth one up many, many years ago to cover that gap, and uh, it worked for, for many, many years. But in terms of my progress through the career, uh, shut up. That's another two seconds you owe me. Um, we went from pretty large equipment to ever smaller, and I've missed out in Massa M, Mini M, and C, and B here. Um, but it's getting smaller and smaller, and we're seeing progress all the time. It's really exciting stuff. And of course, this is a, a much used um, chart, but it, for me, it opened up everything. There weren't just four satellites up in there, there were hundreds of the beggars all over the place. You could do all kinds of things with it. From there, I got involved with the broadcasting and unfortunately for me, met Jonathan Higgins. Um, and uh, uh, so we got involved in doing SNG, in doing broadcast services, and of course, um, providing services from one region to another, um, linking and reselling satellites, etc. Or channels, anyway. But even at that time, it was still analog. So a video channel was going to be 27 megahertz, sometimes 36. Um, but of course, we eventually digitized and eventually brought that down initially to, to nine megs. So with that digitization, it brought in a whole range of services, the new uh, multi-channel TV services, which worked a little bit quicker than this does as it goes along there. But it changed the way that we advertise. It changed the way that we accept content. It changed the way that we do business. And there was a massive progression at that point. MPEG-1, MPEG-2, MPEG-4, DVB-S, DVB-RCS, DVB-S2, and now the DVB-S2 extensions. It's massive. So why am I passionate about this business? Well, it doesn't stop. We're already talking about the S2 extensions. We're already talking about ultra-high definition TV. Already, even at 4K, we can just about get that into one transponder. If we're going to look at 8K, we're going to have to work out how to tie transponders together or even further improve um, the, um, uh, the encoding. Why am I passionate? We're involved in broadcasting, broadband services for consumers and for enterprise, rural communications for education, sport, military, disaster relief, SNG. 
in my short 400-year career, I've gone from dots and dashes to putting half a gig through a single satellite transponder. That's why I'm passionate about this business, because we touch lives. Everyone wants to make the mark in the industry? That's mine. Thank you. Five minutes.